Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the regular scheduled council meeting for June 21st, 2021 at 7 p.m. Ms. Brenner, if you'd call roll, please. Mayor Lowry. Here. Councilman Grimm. I'm here. Councilman Eggleston. Here. Councilman Nowakowski. Here. Councilman Cobb. Here. Councilman Roadwald. Here. Vice Mayor Cook. Here. Seven members present. Thank you very much. And tonight's invocation will be done by Vice Mayor Cook. If you will, please bow your heads. Our Heavenly Father, please bless this group as we come about to do the business for the citizens of this great city. Please also protect our first responders, our deputies, our fire, EMS, and especially to the employees who work so hard to make this city a beautiful place as we know it. In God's name we pray, amen. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, moving on. Action, we'll need action on the work session minutes for 6 7 21. So move. Second. Uh, motion by Mr. Vice Mayor, second by Ms. Eggleston. Council, any discussion on those minutes? When you're ready. Councilman Nowakowski? Yes. Councilman Cobb? This name is not there. Oh, that's right. Okay. Pardon? I thought you were, but no. Okay. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Motion or er, minutes accepted, 601. All right, and then we'll need a motion to accept the regular uh, regular council meeting minutes for June 7th, 2000. So moved. Second. Uh, we'll go with Ms. Nowakowski with a motion. Okay. In the first in person meeting. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Do you want to change that to a yes vote? Yeah. Mr. Cobb he was, was here. He was not here on our last virtual, but he was here. No, he, he's getting confused. He wasn't at the meeting we had a week ago yeah. regarding the, uh, yeah. the special meeting on the 14th. Yes, yeah, that's what. Okay, I'm okay. He was here at the regular So, meeting. yes, you were, you were here for these meetings that were. Okay. Good? Yeah. Yes, okay, so I think we had a motion by Ms. Nokowski and then a second by Ms. Eggleston. What I heard. Okay. Any discussion, Council? When you're ready. Okay. Councilman Okowski? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Councilman Roadwell? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Minutes accepted 7 0. Thank you. And then moving on to committee our communications done tonight. Jump down to number seven, city manager's report. Good evening, Mr. Bridge. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council, members of the public. So get myself in order here. I'm going to go over to the city manager report. And we will start off with our police report with uh, Sergeant Lehman. Hello. For the uh, New Carlisle Patrol Division, in the month of May, the New Carlisle deputies were dispatched with 209 calls for service. Um, this was an increase of 53 calls to the, from the prior month. Um, we have the deputy Moody, who was in this uh, city for a while, has left the city. He is now the new deputy for Bethel Township. Um, the Bethel Township position came open because that deputy actually uh, moved to what they call fall cash. So he's working with drug interdiction on the interstates, things like that now. Um, the deputy, another deputy that just recently started out here is Megan Forrest. She just completed her third week of training, and tomorrow she moves into her fourth week. So she'll be starting her fourth week with Deputy Major Sack, and we're excited to be getting her out here. Uh, she'll be a third shift deputy working the streets. Um, the only one that has not started yet would be Matthew Harris, and he has been on military leave. He's been deployed for a while, and he is actually scheduled to come back tomorrow. So um, we'll see if I hear from him tomorrow. You know, I don't know if any planes have been delayed or you know, things like that. Um, in the month of May, the deputies patrolled 5,542 miles. 
they taking 209 calls. Out of the 209 calls, they completed 33 reports. They had 45 assists with 33 criminal arrests. Of the, 30, of the 33 criminal arrests that they made, um, they had eight felonies, 16 misdemeanors, and nine warrant arrests out of them. They uh, also initiated 37 traffic stops. Out of the 37 traffic stops, they issued 29 warnings, you put the, go ahead. only eight citations. Uh, they've also conducted 412 business checks, and they had 77 citizen contacts. That just means we're the out and actually communicating with the public. That's, that's all I have in our report. Council, any uh, questions, comments for Sergeant Lehman? All right, thank you for the report, sir. We appreciate it as always. Thank you, Sergeant Lehman. And before, before we move on, I wanted to have a short conversation with Council. Um, trying to think of, of ways to make uh, Sergeant Lehman's life a little bit more comfortable because you know he has to come out here for the meetings every, twice a month. So I'm thinking about doing one of two things. Um, either just having our second shift deputy come give the report I've always done before. Um, or ask that we can give Mr. Lehman's report at 6 o'clock. But I am still leaning towards more having whatever deputy we can do, <coughs> just sit and just read the report, uh, just to give some you know quality time to Mr. Lehman. Um, I haven't made my decision yet. I'm going to do that. But I think the <coughs> council will be um, aware that if you see any changes of that, that's that's why. Great. Thank you. Yep. No problem. Okay. Thank you for the great report, sir. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Yep. And moving on with the city manager report, we have fire chief, chief trustee with a fire and EMS report. Mayor, Council, citizens. For the month of May, the New Carlisle Fire Division responded to 86 EMS calls in the city, 13 EMS calls in Elizabeth Township. The division responded to 11 fire-related calls in the city and one in Elizabeth Township. We had three EMS calls answered by mutual aid either by Pike Township or Bethel Clark due to Medic 52 being on a response. We, we answered three mutual aid calls to Pike Township and three to Bethel Clark. Uh, our new gear washer is now installed and is working great. This was, uh, we purchased this through the fire marshal's grant. We received a $10,000 grant uh, through the state fire marshal's office uh, for the gear washer because uh, the bunk gear has to be washed in a certain type of machine with a certain type of soaps and everything. So we were able to get a grant for that, which was a big plus for us to have that in the station and you know to use because we were having to take our gear to other departments to get it washed. Uh, other than that, right now the department's doing good. Other than we're, we are looking for people, we're trying to hire more people. Thank you, Chief. Council, any questions or comments for Chief? All right, thank you, Chief. Keep up the good work. We appreciate it, sir. Thank you, Fire Chief. And moving on to the City Manager Report, we will go with Colleen Harris, uh, Finance Director for the Finance Report. Thank you, Mr. Bridge, Mayor, Council, members of the community. Uh, my reports have been attached to the details, so I'll just go over the summary. The revenue received for the month of May is $703,465.61. The expenditures for the month of May is $508,884.61. Our statement of cash, which is basically a, a version of like our checking account, we had a beginning balance the first of the year at $4,760,036.34. Currently, as of the end of May, we have an ending balance of $4,376,880.84. Also attached in the summary is the bank reconciliations, and they are all balanced and correct. And I can entertain any comments, questions, or go into more detail. Any questions or comments for the finance director? All right. Move to accept the report. So, motion from Mr. Grimm, second from Vice Mayor to accept the finance report. Thank you. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Councilman Grimm. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Nowakowski. Yes. Councilman Cobb. Yes. Councilman Rodewald. Yes. Vice Mayor Cook. Ready? Yes. Motion accepted 7 0. Thank you, Ms. Reiner. And back to you, Mr. Bridge. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Harris, for a wonderful report. Appreciate that. And we'll move on with the service report with our service director, Mr. Howard Kitko. Good evening. Thank you, Mr. Bridge, Mayor, members of council, members of the public. 
I always start off with our public works department. Uh, in my bullet point, I have decorative lights and we'll be doing some maintenance on those poles, but I do want to give an update that uh, we're right around the second week of August for uh, our two poles that will be coming in at uh, CBS and the one at 129 North Main Street and our two spare poles will be coming at the same time. So uh, slow build, but that's how it goes and then COVID really made that uh, a lot longer. Um, moving down, with uh, we got the striping done uh, for the fire and police. I, uh, again, I still have um, some more research to do to make sure that when we do the parking out on Main Street that we have optimal spaces and we get it done efficiently because we got to make sure no one's in there and just try to make the stripes that we do will work and easy to maintain. We don't want to do anything fancy that we got to, you know, try and that a machine won't take care of uh, in any kind of speed manner, speedy manner. Um, dirt patching, or you know, a lot of it has been completed. However, you know, I've, as I've been driving around, we do get calls for potholes. Um, we're mixing that with mowing. Mowing has been super crazy this year with rain, and then it gets hot out. Um, we are behind. We did get the parks caught back up. They did go almost two weeks. Apologize for that, but uh, I'm working on some two-week grass out at the cemetery too. So we're really uh, been backed up with mowing, and hopefully we can get caught up. Under the, uh, of course, um, Adams is uh, still in the same spot. We're working on getting ready to get those footers and foundations removed here soon. Moving on to the sewer department, there's not a whole lot going on other than um, uh, Mr. Bridge and I did interview a couple of our in-house uh, employees for the position of superintendent. I'll be making uh, my decision tomorrow for that, and we'll probably be going out for fourth person in that department, <coughs> and then uh, we'll be looking at some, a new employee at some point, we think in another department after Mr. Bridge um, gives you a little bit of information about a, an employee we have going out. Um, and also uh, coming up in our, a, a soon to be meeting is about the funds that we got from the federal government for COVID and infrastructure. Um, been working on some you know, minor estimates for uh, additional clarifiers for down to wastewater plant. <coughs> Under your 2021 road reconstruction resurfacing project, uh, Fenwick phase one design is complete. The documents have been sent to Clark County for approval. Uh, advertisement is set for 611 and um, this past uh, week at 618. Bid opening is uh, 625. Reconstruction is currently slated for this fall and uh, the grant was approved in the amount of 372,000 with the city's matching share estimated to be 59,000, which will come out of our street levy fund. And this was a CDBG uh, community block development grant and also an LMI qualified area. So that's really the only place where we could use these funds was in the Northwoods area. Uh, Clark County engineered, we did receive the bids for the uh, streets to be resurfaced. That city costs um, to overlay Sunset, Cambridge Court, Deerfield and South Scott between Madison and Linden is $99,324. Um, our funding is currently set at $110,000 and that is also slated for this fall. That was, um, the bid was awarded to Shelley Company and um, they're currently working on the eastern side of Clark County. They said once they get done, they'll move over this way. Um, <coughs> the prices for those uh, streets, we do have, we don't expect to hit the 110. Because in our estimate of 99, we do have um, a little bit of contingency built in there. So hopefully we do well and we move some of these funds into next year's, you know, possible streets that we've been talking about, Villa, Henry, Falcon, those few that were, we got to get finished up. And then the last thing is Madison Street School demo. Uh, demolition contract has been awarded to Smith's Wrecking and says Wrecking, but they do a lot of demolition projects. Um, and that was in the amount of $163,000. The asbestos pavement, as in my report, was to start 621, in which they did. They started today uh, removing asbestos ceiling tiles from the cafeteria, and then they're going to be moving on to the rest of the, of the asbestos. So if you see trucks moving in and out, uh, they are back there um, working. And the, during the, the middle of this week, or I'm sorry, let me finish up here. So, uh, then the demolition will start probably next week, and it'll probably take two to three weeks. Uh, for them to be out backfilled seed straw. The uh, fencing will be partially installed this week and I had passed out to uh, the community garden folks that they will no longer be able to access the community garden via the drive that was to Madison School. 
because the fence will include that drive and will be gated off for the uh, construction company. Uh, they will be able to access, access that through uh, Clay Street. Uh, but that is all I have on this report. I can entertain anything from the report or anything that someone has seen, heard about. Mr. Grimm. We're just going to be resurfacing Scott Street? Uh, South Scott and we're going to be doing an overlay. So where the real rough parts are, they're going to build a crown in with a scratch course and an overlay. So there will still be no curb and gutter on that South, that South Scott uh, portion. Yeah, because there's some places where there's no pavement at all. Yeah, that is the outside of what would be the curb edge. And I talked with actually a couple of residents down through there because we don't have the funding because it needs storm. There is no storm there. Um, is to at least get it to where water sheds off the road. The road is smooth. And then um, we may work on where some individuals may build a, which some already have done, build an asphalt um, parking pad off to the side. Okay. Good. Good. Council, anyone else? I just had one. When we do the streets, uh, well, there, and I know it's not you know, the concrete, like curbs and stuff, aren't going to be in there. But if there's something that's real bad, that's crumbling, are you going to are you guys going to be fixing any of that? We are, we are. So we actually don't have. Um, <coughs> I think there's really minor concrete in the past. We've had some, but we don't have much this uh, this year. Okay. And then one other one on the catch basins. Realistically. How long are we looking on these? Because we've been talking about them forever. Oh, it's it's been going for some time. Uh, we're we're heads above water, but we're get, we're getting there. I it, honestly, I'd love to get them done before the end of summer. Before right. we get but, to but we are looking to have somebody season. else do them, though, right? I'm sorry. We are looking at having somebody else do them. <clears throat> some, uh, Mr. Slattery and I are trying to get out and get our schedules together. We can go out and see if we can do a couple ourselves that are minor and get them through till uh, 2024 when we might be able to maybe get some rebuilt in the um, ODOT overlay project. Okay, thank you. That's all I have. Back to you, Mr. Bridge. Oh, hold on. I don't have my clue what's going on. I do. It's a joke. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Kinko, for a wonderful report. And moving on with the city manager report, planning and zoning report, uh, department report with Derek Hutchinson. Good evening, council, citizens. Thanks for all coming out to see me tonight. Um, it's nice to be back in person to see everyone. Uh, so we got the planning department. Zoning, uh, when this report was made last week, we had 47 zoning applications we received. We're up to 50 now uh, with 48 zoning permits that are approved. Uh, I've got attached here the statistics uh, up to May for the code compliance. Um, one uh, change in, in code compliance that we've made is uh, uh, we did uh, lose Andrew, our uh, younger um, code officer. He took a full-time position for Miami Township. Uh, so we wish him the best of luck uh, in his new new job and direction he's going there. Um, we. Uh, we still have uh, Dave Bunting, and we're going to be looking at uh, modifying him to give him more hours uh, and, and take over. He's got 28 years experience, so he, he could handle quite a bit. So we're going to uh, uh, try it out with, with one and see if, uh, you know, make sure he doesn't get overwhelmed and, and go from there. Uh, code summary, the activity type, uh, they had 185 different types of activity, so that is everything from in initial inspections, reinspections, communication uh, with residents, uh, so year to date they're at 525. Economic development and community development, uh, 210 North Pike Street, uh, right now I'm waiting on the asbestos company uh, to get out to do their asbestos testing. Uh, once that is complete, uh, we will move forward on that, so hoping, hoping sooner than later on that. Uh, tool Lending Center, uh, this past, well, it's been a couple weeks ago, on the 5th, we had our uh, open house, um, had hot dogs and water out there for the community. We did, uh, didn't have a huge wave of, 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 uh, of residents come through there, but we did have some. Uh, and I thank you for the ones that are here tonight that did uh, attend. Um, it was a good time to get to meet some new people. Uh, and uh, we did lend tools during the event. So, and, and that program is, is, is really taking off. We're getting calls daily for, for residents to borrow tools for that. So we'll continue to add, we've gotten a lot of requests for new tools, so we'll be continuing to add tools to that, uh, to that program. Uh, I'm sure everyone's seen the uh, construction that was underway at the Van Crest Healthcare Center. 
they're doing a, an assisting, assisted living wing addition to the rear of the building there. Uh, so they are underway on that. Uh, so we are teaming up with Fab Metals uh, on the basket brackets for our downtown bulls. Uh, I've been having a trouble finding a company that is either manufacturing that at the time or can meet the specs to meet our lamp poles. So these will be decorative baskets that we'll have hanging off brackets from our, our downtown uh, lamp posts. Uh, so Fab Metals is going to custom make us some. So uh, we're going to be taking uh, one of our old poles down. And they're going to set up mock brackets and, and give us some options and, and see what we can do, come up with. Uh, so excited about that. Uh, continuing planning projects I have. Uh, the comp plan is ongoing. Um, you had mentioned in work session about your uh, retreat. This kind of works hand in hand with that. So uh, that will definitely be input that be very useful uh, and needed for that, for that plan. Uh, CDBG uh, grant program, uh, we partnership with the county, uh, so we're looking to get that kicked off uh, soon. Uh, GIS mapping software, we'll be adding that late summer. Uh, we constantly have our, consistently working on our storage from our uh, old building. Uh, just got a lot of our stuff moved from our uh, downtown Church Street due to our downtown building, so it is looking better in our hallways there. Uh, new code compliance truck, it's been finished. It's been finished since the um, end of April, but it's missing a microchip that seems like all these new cars were missing. So it is, uh, looks very nice, just parked in a field with the rest of the brand new vehicles uh, awaiting a uh, computer chip. So uh, hopefully they get that soon. Uh, and then just ongoing, still working on uh, exterior property maintenance uh, code reviews. And that's all I have. I will welcome any comments or questions. Jim. A few months back, I brought up my house you know, on Fenwick. Yep. It's been vacant for decades. Yep. Yep. So uh, Andy, our previous coach person just left, he was had been in communication with the daughter of the owner. They're out of state. Um, and she was working on getting that, uh, getting possession of the house from her mother to be able to either A, sell, or B, demolish that property. Uh, as soon as I get an update, I'll definitely give you an update on that. Um, I will have to check with Dave. Dave will have to follow up with them to kind of see where the timeline lies, uh, where they were at. Um, there was uh, a couple properties in that area uh, that were in similar, not maybe not as bad as condition, that um, uh, some of the banks that have foreclosed, the banks have gone in and are actually going to be putting money into those properties. So uh, that was one property that I did, uh, was in contact by one of the lenders who may potentially, if the bank takes it back, that they may actually go in and, and repair the property. So uh, I'll definitely keep you up to date on that property. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Graham. Anyone else? I just had a couple. Um, quick question. When on the weekend when the city shut down as far as the administration side of the house, what would be the best way for a citizen to deal with or address someone who, I, I don't know if you can, I don't know if you can prove, but they break the rules when they know the city's closed. They're yeah. parking vehicles in, a car, in, the, in the yard, and then once Monday rolls back around, they're back out. What's the best way for people to? Yeah, so, it, I mean, they could document it for us to be able to cite someone. We, we have to witness it ourselves. So um, if, if, if it is happening more and more often and we're aware of it, we can alternate schedule to have someone in on a Saturday. Or we could work with, uh, with our deputies to possibly witness that for us so, uh, so we can address it during the work week as well. Okay. Uh, so in, uh, on our new website, the uh, complaint form is it's working. I, we're, a lot of people are using it, and it comes directly to me, and I get it right out. Um, so and you can attach pictures, photos, anything like that. So uh, if anything is viewed after hours or on weekends, uh, definitely let us know about it. Um, and if it's occurring at a certain time, we'll try to arrange that where we're able to witness that. Okay, great. Thank you. And then on the tool lending shed, just out of curiosity, is there a, a hot tool that gets rented more than, like, is there something that's getting used more than anything else? Uh, well, definitely the mowers. The mowers are getting used. Um, the paint sprayer got loaned out last week, uh, and that was to paint a deck, outside oh. deck. Uh, and it worked, it worked good. Um, let's see. Uh, power washer's been lent out a couple times, so uh, a lot of the outdoor outdoor equipment has been used. Uh, weed eaters, trimmers, edgers, 
Um, the blowers have been used. Um, probably the ladder and the wheelbarrow has been probably the most really? most used. Any problems as far as damage? Things coming back with a nothing at all. Nothing really? at all. Great. I've had uh, I've had uh, borrowers who borrowed it. Maybe something wasn't working right, or maybe they didn't quite understand how it worked. They contacted us. We either met them to show them how it worked. Um, but uh, no, it it has been flawless. That's awesome. Yeah, but uh, I had a lot of requests for some different tools that uh, that I still have budget that I can still get. So we had some new tools, but. Uh, uh, yeah, it's it's working great. More and more people are starting to hear about it now. All the visitors we got on our open house were people that wasn't aware of it, and they were they actually just had the park by chance, but yeah. was able to see what we had to offer. And um, so yeah, it's, it's a good thing. Awesome, great. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, back to you, Mr. Bridge. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, great report there, uh, Mr. Hutchison. Thank you so much. And moving on with the city manager report under informational items, uh, mayor's, mayor's court legislation, upcoming ordinances. Uh, there's quite a few. That first bullet point, which says authorized registration, mayor's court, Ohio Supreme Court, Bureau of Motor Vehicles, State of Ohio Treasurer, Ohio BCI. That will be a single ordinance. Uh, then we'll be following it up with a you know, slew of other ones that we have to do to establish various things. Uh, we didn't want to put those in front of council until we know that the other one was going to go through. Uh, so those will be coming to you guys either the next meeting or July 19th. We're shooting for July 6th, we really are, but that's a lot of legislation. It's my schedule, it's Jake's schedule, it's gonna be Ms. Harris, so I have to get her involved in some of these. Um, so it's the latest July 19th. Um, so the resolutions that we're gonna need is we'll have to amend the CIP for the court software. Um, again, that's either gonna be July 6th or July 9th because that's gonna be a pretty, pretty big investment coming up. Um, but some of the things that I need to talk to council about is, you know, there's got to be some startup funds for that, and we did not allocate some of that, so we're going to supplement. Um, we're going to want the general fund to just loan that money to the mayor's court and then pay it back eventually, so we'll write the legislation as such. Is council okay with that, or would you prefer the general fund just to pay for it? I mean, technically speaking, for a clean audit, we really should have it repaid. Yeah, that sounds good to me. And I'm speaking on behalf of Ms. Harris, but I, I know her pretty well. <laughs> Council okay with that? Yeah. Okay, so we'll draft the legislation for a um, to, to indicate Eleven. that will be returned. Okay. Okay, great. Um, so we have the special meeting set for um, June 28th. Um, so I do have to let everyone know that I actually will be on vacation. Um, it was something that I did not realize that it was done. So either one or two things can happen. Um, either we can reschedule that for a later date on the 30th or maybe tackle it in a work session. Um, I always wanted that first part to be focused on Mr. Kitko and his departments because that's where we have the most need. Um, if council's not willing to change it, I can just have Mr. Uh, Kitko and Ms. Harris run the meeting on the 28th. They're very qualified to do so. Um, and I will be at Cedar Point, hopefully not motion sickness from early first. <laughs> council, what would So it is like? up to you, and I am good with either way. I have confidence in my staff that they could have a great meeting with you guys. He has confidence in his staff. I don't see any issues. No, yeah. no change it? Yeah. Is that okay with you? Yeah, that's fine. It's fine. It's fine with me. Because if you guys are people, people. Okay. Uh, okay. So you want us to reschedule? No. Okay. okay. All right. So Mr. Roy won't, won't be here, but he's okay with us moving forward without him. Okay. <clears throat> Right. Awesome. That's what we'll do. So we'll keep it on the 28th. I'll have Mr. Kitko um, lead the meeting. Uh, Ms. Harris can be here for Q&A regarding any finances. Um, if she, should, uh, should her expertise need to be utilized? Send pictures after you get off the roller coaster, though. I will. <coughs> it's going to be fun. I'm actually excited. Um, Records Commission meeting. Uh, we're having a meeting on June this Thursday, June 24th at 4:30. It's be at the Smith Park Shelter House. It is open to the public. Um, but they're meeting to approve items listed for the destruction that we have listed on our RC3 form. Uh, new, help, new shelter house, I uh, just have update here. We did meet with quite a few people. Um, we do have to secure a topographical map, if I'm still right on that. On one of them. On one of them. Um, but we don't have much more new information coming in. Um, we're still waiting to get those formal estimates being done. As they come in, we'll definitely share that with council. Um, Charter uh, motion to approve. So Mr. Bridge, it, yeah. I could drop real quick. So I just wanted to ask a question. I didn't think to ask it earlier. I didn't know if Mr. Kitko, had, you know, if any of this was kind of coming true on what he sees every day. Is, is the lumber and stuff starting to drop a little? I've been hearing that possibly. I've heard that it's, it's flattened, that it may start going the other way. Okay. I was just curious. Out that. of the blue, yeah, this, this was news to me. Gotcha. Sorry, Mr. Bridge. I oh, no. Ask that question. Oh, no, not at all. We all need to know the price of lumber. Yes. I have a, a, a section of deck to repair at my house and we're waiting. 
Um, okay, motion to approve. So we have Scott Griffith's charter review application. It is attached. Um, as the courtesy to Mr. Griffith, I did redact his uh, daytime phone number. Um, but I would need a motion to approve that on council. So move. Second. Motion by first by Mr. Vice Mayor, second by Ms. Eggleston. Councilman Nowakowski? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Motion's accepted 7-0. All right, and that puts the complete roster up to Mr. Donnie Hall, Mrs. Pat Currybacher, Mr. Ian, Ian Meadows, and Mr. Scott Griffiths. And moving on with the report, we have our health statistics, health statistics uh, provided by the Clark County Combined Health District. Take a look at that. It's kind of uh, cool information. Um, they, you know, the number of plumbing inspections, et cetera, food inspections they do. And then we have the health stats as well on top of that. Um, bittersweet news, a great guy. Um, been with the city for 31 years. Mr. Ron Wright has announced his retirement from the city of New Carlisle. And that will be effective 3.30 p.m. on Friday, June 30th. Uh, Ron is a great guy. He's very knowledgeable. He's been around, for, like I said, 31 years. That's, a, that's an awesome accomplishment. So uh, we wish Ron the absolute best. And that's what we, Mr. Kitko had alluded to in his report that we would be looking to fill another vacancy after I do announce that. And we are looking to do something for Ron. Um, I don't know what, the, we haven't finalized anything yet, but for someone retiring after that many years of service, we definitely want to send them out in a very positive light. So we'll definitely submit the information to council when we have the date and time for the little, you know, I don't want to say party, dinner, what we're going to decide on. Please come and show your support and thank uh, Mr. Mr. Wright for his many years of service. Would we be doing something, I think the last time uh, someone with a long amount of service retired, they got a key or brought something. I, I know we did. Yeah, they got a plaque. Gonna, yeah. Okay, so you guys are going to take care oh, of yeah. that. Oh, okay, yeah, he'll great. get a plaque. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep, yeah, his favorite road, uh, restaurant is Texas Roadhouse, so. I gotta figure out some things, but we'll definitely keep council abreast. And hopefully, you guys can stop by. Awesome. And again, the ongoing projects. I'm sorry I, I did not put that down with the first one. I had to sit in my home. I'm like I didn't attach that. So that's what it is. We have added, I think, one new thing: income tax two, income tax comparisons. Um, we're up about 20% from this time last year, so that's that's good because we were up we were up last year even despite of COVID. So we're up again 20%. Uh, so that's awesome. Uh, but again, please, I have amended this. We do have an ongoing list for those of you who don't know to do this, just so everyone is aware. We have, and it's not exhaustive because there's more things on there, but we have a whole list of the big projects we're working on. And it is, it's a lot and they're very time consuming. But we started doing that so council had a better understanding of, of where we are with our daily tasks. So it's been very well received with council. So if you want to have any questions on it, just let us know. That's all I have for my report. All right, council, any questions or comments for Mr. Bridge and his fine report? All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Bridge. No problem. All right, moving on to comments from the members of the public. If you have any comments, please go to the podium. We'll need your name and address. Um, my name is Val Ferdman. I live at 200 North Pike Street. Uh, before I talk what I'm about here to do today, I want to thank you guys, every single one of you, for doing what you do for our city. Um, we couldn't have a nice city what, like what we have without you guys. So first off, thank you very much. Um, we appreciate what you do. Um, the other, th why I'm here to speak today is I do live at 200 North Pike Street. Uh, we are in the vicinity of the new Pike Apartments, Pike Studios. Um, and I'm just here because I'm a little concerned about what's going on. Um, not from, per se, that what's going on over there, but the cars, parking is a situation that we're concerned about. Uh, we know that there's going to be a yellow stripe down the road and that in front of it, that's fine. But we just want to make sure that the attendants are aware of that they were all supposed to be given a parking spot when they moved in. Um, we've talked to a couple of them up and down the street. And now I know this is what they're telling us could be completely wrong. But I have been told by several of the tenants that they were never assigned a parking spot and that several of the cars in the parking lot that is on the corner of Lincoln and Maine don't even move and aren't, aren't people that are living there. 
Jackson in Maine, thank you. And I'm just a little concerned um, as it proceeds, I just wanna make sure what we have on Pike Street stays a nice area. We um, also witnessed the other day, one of the tenants was out walking and he has a beautiful dog and he dropped the dog's waist right on the corner of Jackson and Main and came out two days later and there was another bag of dog waste sitting in our curb. I have no problem with them walking their dogs and he's at least picking it up off our streets, but now we need to make sure it gets where it belongs. Um, the weeds are growing up, they cut it, they're right back. Um, the people there have been very nice. The ones that we've come in contact with, we, I will say we haven't had any issues from them. Um, I don't live right in front of it. I live catty cornered from it. The other night, we've lived in our house for 20 years. The other night um, when the, there used to be a nursing home, when the door would open and an alarm would go off, the alarm went off all night long. I didn't want to bother our officers with it because it's not an emergency. They're out doing other things. They were there that day working. Um, with the, our windows open, it was annoying, you know, but we just kind of let it go. I just want to make sure that what we have and what we were told in the planning stages is followed through. I know we live on a public street. I know people can park anywhere they want. <coughs> but it would be nice if we kind of made sure they got into the parking spots. And there is a parking lot for them. Um, we've also been told that they were told that they could park behind Bell Manor, whether or not this is true. We've talked to several, they said they parked there and they got tickets. So I don't know what's going on and I just wanna make sure that we have what's coming in to our community, keep it in a nice community and keep our Pike Street looking nice. What's going in can be a great thing, but we just need to stay on top of it. So, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Council, any comments? Um, I was over there actually a couple weeks ago. One of the citizens that lives over there called me and she asked me to stop by. So I stopped by her house and talked to her for a little bit. And I was only there for probably 15 to 20, maybe a half hour. And the short amount of time I was there, it was, I mean, I didn't see anything illegal other than parking in front of the, in front of the building, you know, on, on the yellow parts where there is yellow. Um, but it was, you know, just from being there for 30 minutes, you could tell if you live there, that would be truly annoying. Um, I know we've talked about building a case for a, a nuisance property. What, I don't know if you can answer this or if I would need to say, what, what, does, what does that entail? I mean, what? A lot of calls to the residents. Is that, okay. Yeah, I mean, that's what it comes down to. It's not saying like one person's gonna do it. I mean, you have to, you gotta have numerous, numerous calls. Right, yeah, I, and I figured mm -hmm. that it would be something of that nature. But <coughs> even, like, even like that, they're gonna have, they're not gonna do it off of illegal parking or loud noise. It's gonna have to be some, pretty serious crime going over there, like drug deals and stuff like that. I know one of the, one of the things that she complained was, is, and I don't know if you've heard it from where you live, because she lives a little bit farther down from you, but um, mm -hmm. was you know, loud music out on that, like that front porch area where they're at, that they're out there at 11, 12 at night with loud music. And they had a disco ball out there with lights spinning on this thing. And she's like, you know, I, I don't mind a little music here and there, but a disco ball and people dancing on the porch and whatever else was going mm -hmm. on, it's, it's, you know, and, and that's what I told her. I said, you know, you, how, no matter how minor it may seem or you may feel that you're, you know, you're being kind of a, a thorn in the side of the sheriff's department. I mean, I know that there are sometimes more important things they need to address, but, you know, I told her, I said, you know, call, call them every time. I said, you know, because that's what's going to help you in the long run. Yeah, and loud, like if those type of things would actually weigh a lot more, especially if they're doing it after hours. So mm -hmm. it, it's, it should be no different than if it was a normal someone living next to you. I mean, you, you're going to have to call the non-emergency number and make, make the report, you know? Um, we, 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 that's just, it's no different than living in, uh, on Rawson next to houses versus on Pike. And it's just an unfortunate, because I agree with that. It's something that could be good. Um, I think, I don't know what's being communicated between the tenants and the, the people over there, um, but the owner's very aware of the parking he has available. Um, I mean, I will revisit the conversation with him, but the owner's out of Virginia. He is a normal person like you and I. He's not backed by big money. He just is making a personal investment on this building. So he has very, he doesn't want this to fail. I mean, he's got a lot of his own personal money invested into it. I think the issue just comes, he is in Virginia, you know, and then he's hires these people to come work and manage the building. Now, I mean, quite frankly, and I, I hate to come across like this, but 
sometimes I think the people that he hires aren't qualified to be doing what they're doing. And um, that in itself leads to issues. Then we have another person over there that likes to throw stuff into the hat. So it's almost like this combination of, of, of a bad storm. It is. And we have been working with, with Mr. Wren, who's the owner. And he is very close to getting the, part, the additional parking lot built. COVID backed it up a little bit. But it was, should have started a, you know, a month and a half ago, but one particular citizen over there decided to interject herself and actually sent the company away. So right now what he's doing is working on getting a topographical map of the area. So that is on his radar to do. It is, it, we are working with him to get that done. Um, um, we work on a pink Pike Street. We did find that people were parking a little bit in front of the yellow lines and then blocking people not being able to back out. So council instructed us to, to payment. We're going to do that. Um, and if anyone is parking down there, I'm sure we can give tickets, you know, um, but Can I ask for a if that If you're parking in front of them, in front of their apartments I know, we're already prepared, they're going to be parking out in front of our house And we have the same issue, we, you know where we're at We have two-way drive, the street's right there We have a hard time now backing out when we have cars there So we may be back in a couple months and asking you to do the same thing with us I got you Parking ban is from Jackson yeah. to Jefferson. Yeah, no parking. The what? The parking ban is from Jackson to Jefferson. That includes you, right? We're, mm -hmm. we're at Jackson. We are at Jackson. We're between Jackson and Lee. Okay. But they're already parking there now. And I know once, I mean, it's going to happen. Well, you know, this will be a, this will be a trial and error, I think, thing. You know, step, we'll see, you know, we're going to paint it. We'll see what happens and then you know, if we need, we make adjustments or, or if we get more suggestions from people who live over there or, or, or see what we think may actually work, we just make that adjustment. Um, parking their lots. Parking their lots. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay, so I had two people wanted to speak, Mr. Roadwall and then uh, Mr. Hutchinson. So go ahead, Mr. Roadwall. Well, I just had a couple questions. Um, do we know what the occupancy is of that building right now? How many people are actually tenants? Do we know what it was? When I talked to him, four. when I talked to him a couple months ago, when we were discussing a water issue he had with a broken pipe. I asked because we were looking at leaks, and I think he he was like twelve, maybe twelve plus some units, but most of them are two people in there. There's not like a hundred people living there. Okay. I'm gonna guess somewhere in a twenty-five to thirty. Is that me? Current units or people? People. Oh, I was gonna say there wasn't supposed to be more yeah. units right now until that big block is made. I hope that's not true. Yeah, I wanna say I maybe. Would say, I would say you're right. Yeah, and, probably. And are they still using? The, the gravel lot behind the old uh, West Banco, is that where they're supposed to be parking at? That's where it's going to be, the new lot's going to be built. They have parking right off Main Street. They rent the parking out to the health center. He owns that lot too, but he rents it to the health center. So that's why the people are getting tickets when they go there. Um, but like I said, it's, here's the issue. Well, These are public streets, so we can paint it. We can paint it all day long, but you're just going to move them people somewhere else. Well, I know, but I mean, we can what's, what's in the, the old gravel parking lot now? Nothing? There, there is no gravel. There is no parking There's lot. There's no gravel. There. It's grass. He has, oh, to, he's, grass. he has to build it. And that's where it's coming. And at the planning meeting, when we came, we were told that that's going to be blacktop because we don't want to lose gravel. Or we want something that sticks so it doesn't, we don't have rocks for our windows. Yep. So in the meantime, at the planning meeting, we were told that they would only rent out enough apartments or studios, whatever they're calling them, as there was parking spots available to which the the, which technically they have but there's multiple people living in a studio unit another thing no, they were, they were, i think they uh, they were told us that they were permitting like two parking spots per unit if i remember right it, if I'm wrong, it depends it depends on if there's occupancy but here's the thing that you know i've seen people park off main street i've seen it in the morning i've seen it when i leave what's not being accounted for these people are allowed to have visitors at their park. So a tenant may be parking in a lot, but they have a visitor come over. The visitor doesn't have an assigned, shot, uh, assigned cheap, uh, parking spot because they're a visitor. You know, there will be visitor spots in a new lot when it's done. You know? Well, I can tell you the ones parking on the street are not visitors. 
Well, I mean, they are. They are. Well, I'm not sure they are. I'm just saying, but you I feel, I mean, this has been, this has been what? Almost, yeah. Yeah. I'm this not arguing. Been two years right. now? I'm sure they are part of it. A year and a half now since, since the, we started raining out? Two years? Last summer they cleared the lot to do the parking lot. And I, I mean, I understand COVID, uh, but I think it's time that we, 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 we put a little pressure on this gentleman. We are. Um, and, and but here's the deal. We are taking care of it on this side. I've been in contact with Mr. Cook about that. That's something we should not talk about at a public open meeting. One, because it's not appropriate. And then two, but that falls under us on the day to day and we are on it. I mean, we are on it. Mr. Cook knows what's going on with that. I'm very close to getting some things done, but I'm not going to announce that here. You know, but on this side, we're very aware of it. We're involved in it. There, five days out of a week, you think we get phone calls on it? That's fine. I think yeah. we're aware of it. I just, mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure that you all were aware of what's going on. Because that's my job as a citizen. Because I love where I live and mm -hmm. I don't want to move. It's a great street. It's a perfect street. Mm -hmm. It was. It's too busy. <laughs> it's very busy. But it's okay. I still love it. Well, what I would like, you know, and I, I know I talked to you, Randy, about it after I had the visit with the lady over there. And, and maybe jumping the gun just a little too much, um, Mr. Wren. You know, I understand COVID, the parking lot needs to be finished. Me personally, I'd like to give him a few more months, see what happens. And, and if it doesn't get done, then I would, you know, not that he has to come. I'd like to call and see if you'd like to join a meeting with, with I mean, you know, I get it. It's his business, he's putting his money into it. But mm -hmm. at the same time, if you're gonna put your, your, your business in our city, respect the city you're in and the citizens that have lived there long before you have. And I know you have to go through the legal hoops to do so, but I think if, if things don't start to get better, um, you know, in the next you know few months now that summer's rolling around and COVID's kind of fallen off a little, then maybe we can ask him to come to a meeting if if you you know a very you know just honest open meeting and see what we can all do to help each other. I mean, it never hurts to ask. So, Mr. Wren is very anxious to get his parking lot done because no parking lot doesn't mean additional income for him. So I was literally on the phone with him today. Okay. So he, he he's very aware. He's he's being pushed, um, and he's made some progress. Um, but I mean, COVID really did, and they did not clear it. They were leveling it out, yes. and that's what. And they then they stopped. Um, but again, this should have actually started ground groundbreaking about three four weeks ago, but one particular person. No, we, not, we know not, who it is. Yeah, yes, yeah, so they really derailed it. So what that did is it scared the company who was going to do the work, and now they're starting to get everything back together. I but, will say they had someone come out from the um, Yeah, because I had to call Josh and let him know. Say, so hey, come get say, it. So mm -hmm. better off. Mm -hmm. I mean, it did get low, and it's not yeah. a, a high press, so they did it twice. We mowed it. You voted this year? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you for voting. Well, not me personally, but, but, but yeah, our guys, we voted all three of their properties this year. I assume it was done. Oh, the city mowed it? Yeah. So does that mean that gets. When did you guys mow it? Like this past week? No, we mowed, we mowed it the first time this season. We mowed all three of them. Have we mowed it just once? We mowed it once. We, we had work orders. They beat us to Good. it. I was going to say, do you have a little John Deere tractor? Uh, no, we've got. He voted with the John Deere tractor. Yeah, no, yeah. Ours would have been big, red and gray. Excellent. But the city, the city voted. Did, did they get the bill for that? Oh, yeah. I'm sure they will. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, you ain't doing it for free. Well, I just make sure. <laughs> <laughs> three, three, three parcels. Even I mean, even the main street is just the right of way, but still, Avon fine. All this, I mean, they don't have a hefty bill. Okay. That's seventy-five dollar hour per man. Seventy-five dollars per hour per man. $200 admin fee and then a 250 disposal fee or those might be switched. So it's not cheaper when we, when we go do it. All right. Uh, well, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. It. And always, I mean, I, I love, like I said, it could be a really good thing. It could be a great thing for our city. And I, you know, I will think about Val's on eyes and constant communication. She keeps, she keeps me abreast. I did miss a text message from her Wednesday and I will publicly apologize for that. I am human. Uh, but Val's been a very good steward of the people on Pike Place with communicating with me and, you know, even something questionable going down. She's always been. So for that, I, I thank you because sometimes we're not there, you know, and we are, we are, we're very aware that people live on Pike, Pike Street. So don't think that we're forgetting you. We're just 
we can just go on through the motions. <coughs> mm -hmm. Thank you again. Council, anything else? All right. Moving on. Anyone else from the, any comments from the public? You guys look like you just have something you want to say. Cool. Here we go. I knew she, I knew you, I knew you had something. It was Do not touch tough. the AC or you will have a certain council member come after you. All right, let's get moving on to, let's see here, where are we at? Yeah, he's good. All right, resolutions. Uh, we have one for introduction and the rest, uh, yeah, one for introduction tonight on the resolution. So, Ms. Burner, if you would, please. Um, it's in action tonight for the resolution. Oh, okay, I'm just looking at it wrong then, so thank you. Okay. Um, it's resolution 2021-12R, resolution a resolution appointing the city manager as the designee for the city of New Carlisle's mandatory public records training required by the Ohio Public Records Act. Council? So we'll move. Motion by Ms. Eggleston. Second. Second by Mr. Cobb. Coming right so here. So an expedition of this ordinance, this is a yearly housekeeping we do. Um, I'm allowed to go and take this Sunshine uh, Open Records Act training on behalf of council. I would highly recommend uh, council attend with me um, if, if they want. Um, they, they do have online versions of them. You don't kind of get a lot from it. You'll get the basics. You'll get a lot more by sitting in a room for four hours. A lot of people ask different questions. So what I would do is I'll get some dates and they'll email them out. If you don't have the availability, no big deal. We passed this resolution, I can go on behalf. But just in case you wanted to go, I will definitely send council some dates. And you get to spend four and a half hours with me. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Not a lot of takers, huh? <laughs> yeah, that went over real well. <laughs> All right. Any discussion, council? And when you're ready, please. Okay, Councilman Roadwald. Yes. Vice Mayor Cook. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Councilman Grimm. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Nowakowski. Yes. Councilman Cobb. Yes. Motion accepted 7 0. Moving on to our ordinances. We have Ordinance 2021 16. This was introduced um, on June 7th. Public hearing in action tonight. And ordinance authorizing the city of New Carlisle, Ohio, to lease property owned by the city. Second. Motion by Mr. Grimm, second by Mr. Vice Mayor. And an explanation of this ordinance. Um, this is a resident, Mr. Scott Griffin, is interested in putting a series of steps that would lead down to the creek. However, that would actually go through city property. Um, when he discussed this project with me, I had a concern with liability and insurance, all that good stuff. You know, it's private property. His family's over. They access the steps to go. They on our property. They fall. Right. You know, it could be an issue. So, uh, Mr. Griffin had asked about the lease deal. Um, so I said, well, it wasn't my discussion uh, decision, but it will definitely put in front of council. So that's what we have in front of council tonight is a lease for that little section of his personal uh, property that is behind his house for him to put steps. And I included a picture in with the legislation. Uh, the lease agreement was drafted uh, by Jake, our attorney. Um, so he is good with it. I'm good with it, so we just got to make sure council's good with it, but this is what it would look like. Awesome. Yep. Council, any discussion? All right. When you're ready, please. Okay. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Councilman Grimm. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Okowski. Yes. Councilman Cobb. Yes. Councilman Roadwald. Yes. Vice Mayor Cook. Yes. Motion's accepted 7-0. Moving on, we have Ordinance 2021-17. This was introduced on June 7, 2021. Public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance supplementing certain appropriations contained in New Carlisle City Ordinance 2021-01. So moved. Second. Motion by Ms. Eggleston, second by Ms. Nowakowski. And an explanation of this ordinance. Uh, this is an housekeeping ordinance. Anytime that we have to expend more than what council originally approved, those are called supplementals. Uh, so what we have here is um, these are for tax incentive payments. And when you do the budget for the beginning of the year, it's really hard to gauge what their taxes are going to be because we don't know how much they're going to file for. So what we have here is just to reallocate some additional funds and also about 2,000 extra needed to cover a Twin Creek debt payment for a total of 62,000. 
Council, any questions, comments? And when you're ready, please. Councilman Cobb. Yes. <clears throat> Councilman Roadwold. <clears throat> Yes. Vice Mayor Cook. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Councilman Grimm. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Nowakowski. Yes. Motion is accepted 7 0. We have Ordinance 2021 19. This was introduced on June 7, 2021. Public hearing and action tonight. And Ordinance amending Chapter 280 of the Codified Ordinances of the City of New Carlisle, Ohio, for the purpose of establishing a mayor's court. So a motion by Mr. Vice Mayor. Second. Second by Ms. Anderson. I'm sorry, who was the first? Cook. Okay, and an explanation of this ordinance. Uh, this is the groundwork for us to officially have our uh, mayor's court codified in our ordinances. Uh, and this will spearhead the rest of the legislation once this is effective. Questions or comments, Council? And just for some of you who haven't maybe been to the meetings, mayor's court, it will not be ran by the city of New Carlisle's mayor. It will be ran by an outside um, individual uh, who will run the court. Actually, it will be the same individual. Didn't we? It's going to be the same one from, you know. So. No. All right. You ready? ready? Councilman Nowakowski? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Councilman Roadwold? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Motion's accepted 7-0. We have ordinance 2021-20. This is introduction tonight, public hearing and action on um, July 6, 2021. And ordinance amending ordinance 2020-07 <coughs> for the purpose of making the city iPad use policy effective as to additional city board members and to correct a scrivener's error we have ordinance 2021-21, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on July 6, 2021. In ordinance adopting the tax budget for the city of New Carlisle, Ohio for the fiscal year beginning January 1, 2022, and submitting the same to the auditor of Clark County, Ohio. Um, would you like me to read other business? Please. All right, other business. <clears throat> um, we have additional city business open discussion for city related matters. We have city fireworks show will be Saturday, July 3rd, 2021. The city offices will be closed on Monday, July 5th, 2021. Um, we will have a special meeting of city council on Monday, June 28th, 2021 at Smith Park Shelter House. The topics are American rescue potential expenditures and veterans banners. Thank you very much. The council want to keep the veterans banner on there for that discussion. Miss Miss Burner has not been the legal ad. And if we want, what I can do is go over because I'm developing the policy for the veterans on the panic bowls and stuff. Mr. Kiko may not be able to cover all that. So I would suggest maybe um, break it up. Yeah, break it up and something. just focus on the American can, Rescue Plan funds. Yeah. You can leave it on there. That doesn't mean we have to talk about it. Yeah, but she hasn't done the legal ad yet. Yeah, if you want to break it up. Right. Yeah, that's true. It'd be a little cheaper. Yeah, it's fine if you want to drop it off. Drop it. I mean, I have the two, no offense to the veterans. Right. And I'll have that time to email it and we can discuss it at the work session on yeah. the 6th or something. But before I get too much further in, the council is okay because Mrs. Smith wanted to charge them $45, but we're going to have to charge a little bit more because we're going to be the ones putting it up. We're the ones maintaining them and all kinds of stuff. So I'm, I'll put a little dollar figure and I think it's going to be worth council going to approve, but then you know, as you saw, I mean, some of these cities, they guarantee them for X amount of months, and then after that, they're done. We just got to get the best practices, I think, for everything, just to make sure that the city's covered. We don't want to get ourselves another plaque situation where we continually have to redo the plaques and plaques and more plaques. But it's, it's a lot. All right. Council, anything else before we close this? Can I? We have executive the, session. What's that? Right. Oh, Same, gotcha. Before we close out the... Yeah. The, co the council coffee in October is also during the time the farmer's market will be open then as well. So we might want to consider holding that Same at 101. Time. Well, maybe we could see how it goes there. And if it's too, it's too crowded, too crowded yeah. then move it back to here. Uh, parking. Yeah. Uh, all right, if nothing else, we will be going into executive session to discuss the employment of a public employee. I need a motion to do so. Oh, sorry. 
throw something at me. I'm about to. Um, I just wanted to confirm, Randy, you said you were going to get coffee maker? We're, yeah, we're, I'm going to talk to Colleen about it. Miss Harris, I'm sorry. Okay. Just to buy one. I, did, I didn't know if I needed to get with Rhonda. I'll let you know. To borrow yeah. hers again. Okay. Pretty sure we're just going to buy our own. Okay. okay. I don't right. think they're that much money, are they? We find one in the garage sale. Oh, yeah, that's right. She's going to get one. Are we going to need two for down here? Two what? I'll be making Talking like a percolator will do like 30 cups. Yeah, they'll do a lot. Do we need a one for regular and decaf? I'm not a coffee. Drinker, we so can do know. a decaf small. We can do a, just a regular pot of decaf. What about okay. an espresso machine too? Oh, you can go next door. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good idea. If you want coffee? Yeah. Let's go next door. <laughs> All right. Anything else before we move on? That's charged to the city. Need a motion to move into executive session. So moved. No. Second. Motion by Ms. Murkowski, second by Ms. Hagel. Bye, guys. It's good to see you. Councilwoman Nowakowski. Linda. Hey, yes. I'm sorry. I really. I yes. It's all good. Councilman Rodolph. Yeah. Councilman Rodolph. Yes. Vice Mayor Cook. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Councilman Graham. Yes. Councilman Eggs. All right, we'll do a quick five-minute break. We are back in regular session. For the yep. Yep. Council. I would move that we allow uh, Mr. Bridge to work on realigning city management. Second. Second by Mr. Burbaugh, I guess. It was close. Get my name in there. <laughs> so we got a motion to direct the city manager to look into you Emily put in blah, blah 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 realigning city management realigning city Options. management realigning is that anything like retread that works realigning city management okay first grim second roadwalk that's what I got right right yeah. all right so we'll go down the line Ms. Mr. Cobb let me get you in there yes <clears throat> Mr. Cook, Vice Mayor Cook? Yeah. Mayor Lowry? No. Uh, we got to go down to so we can road wall. Ms. Eagle, Councilman yeah. Nagelson? Councilwoman Nowakowski? Yes. And we'll go back with the first. Council, uh, Councilman Grimm, uh, road wall? Yes. And Councilman Grimm? Yes. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second by Mr. Oh, Lord, you guys are fast paced here. Second by Mr. Grimm. Motion by Mr. Vice Mayor. Cook. Grimm. Grimm. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Councilwoman Yes. Aikson. Councilwoman Nowakowski. Yes. Yes. Councilman Cobb. <laughs> uh, Councilman Roadwald. Yes. Councilman Grimm. Yes. And Vice Mayor. Yeah. And that passes seven. Mayor <laughs> adjourned. Thank you.